in business. Okay, so let's take a look at computer vision here. And let me close some of these other tabs. All right, so we're using Google Colab. This is going to take this thing called the Fashion MNIST set of images. And as you see, there are a bunch of little images of things like pants and dresses and such. And what we're going to do is categorize them into these categories, t-shirts, trousers, dress, shirt, sneaker, bag, and so on. Um, now, each image is 782 values, 20 pixels, 28 pixels by 28 pixels, and it's grayscale. So all they have is a brightness from 0 to 255. And so it's going to use a more complex neural network, like the one we used for the sine wave curve before, with some hidden layers of neurons. So the input is going to be um, images. Then the first layer is going to have 128 neurons. That's a hidden layer. And the next layer is going to have 10 neurons for output layer. So you take the input image, you turn it into 784 pixels and feed them in individually. Then you have a layer of hidden neurons to do the calculation. And then you're going to have 10 output neurons, which is going to be a strength showing the probability that it's in these different categories. Um, notice something real important here. Um, this is arguably a really bad way to do it. Humans don't see this way. They don't take each pixel and process it independently. And humans would find an edge and see that this bright light is next to that bright light. So this is the edge of something. So you should really pass like information that there's an edge here. And some modern models are in fact doing that. They're adding simple image processing at the start, like happens in your retina before you go to the brain that does things like detect edges and pass those meaningful structures up. But since it's not doing that, it's just treating each pixel as an independent piece of data and not any higher level things like edges. So here's all the code it takes to do that. Feed that in here and I'm gonna make a new notebook again. Move to trash, return to collab and new notebook. All right, so I put in that code, which again is you know only about a dozen lines of code. Here it gets the fashion MNIST data, which is a standard data set available to it. Here it just renormalizes them by uh, dividing it by 255 to get a number that goes from zero to one, which is what it wants to see. So here's the input layer that has a shape of 28 by 28. So it's gonna flatten that into 762 inputs. Then it's going to pass through a layer of 128 hidden neurons to do the calculation and then have 10 output neurons. And now it's just going to practice because this data comes labeled. So it knows what the right answer is. So it's going to fit it in five epochs. The calculation is much more complicated now. So instead of doing 500 epochs of training, it's going to do five epochs of training, but the training is going to be much more complicated. So there it goes, downloading the data for the database. And there's the first epoch. And as you can see, each epoch is taking about 10 seconds now. Because it's doing a lot more calculation. And if I move this over, I can see. So the accuracy is its measure. Here's the loss. Loss is 0 0.49, 0 0.3. Loss is a measure of how many of them it got wrong. So it's getting better. 0 0.37, 0 0.33. You can see it is getting better with each step as it should. And so it gets the loss down. Here's the accuracy. It was 82% right, and that's getting up to like 89% right. So that's pretty good. Okay, and so it's uh, finished. It's learned how to fit that stuff to some accuracy. And so now we're gonna view some results. So here, Copy that and add another block of code here. All right. So what we're going to see here is the first number is the right answer. Here's categories 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. So the right answer is 9. And as you can see, it has a 97% chance of this being 9. So that's, an, that's a good result. Here's number 2. If you look for small numbers, like here's 58 and 23, it still got it right. The right answer is six, and it had a 58% chance of six. 
but it was less sure. Here's a 77, and that's not seven, I think. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Right, here's one it got wrong. The right answer is seven, nine, eight, seven. It only had a 6% chance of being a seven. It misclassified this as a five. So that's an image it got wrong. If I do zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, that's image number 12. Image number 12, it got wrong. And it looks like two from the end, I guess image number 18, it got wrong. So it'd be nice to take a look at a few of these that it got wrong and see if we can understand why. So here's one. This will um, view the images. And I can choose. Now, I think image number 12 was wrong. So let's try printing out image number 12. I might have counted that out wrong, but we'll see. The first one, it got right. So here's one it got right. And there's one it got wrong. Um, and it was confused about whether it was a five or a seven. And the categories are, there are five is sandal and seven is sneaker. So I'm not too surprised. It can't tell from this shape whether it's a sandal or a sneaker, which I'm not even sure I know how to tell the difference very well there. So it's the sort of thing a human might do. And if you look at when I did it here, it got confused by this, whether this was, I think, a sneaker or an ankle boot or something like that. Um, different kinds of shoes, and it can't quite tell them apart. So it's failing where you'd think it would fail, where the image is um, not very clear. Now, you could also try fitting it longer. And if you do, this is a real important issue. Um, you can train it more, and the accuracy on the training set will increase from 84 to 94 percent, but um, you get a thing called overfitting. If you train it too much, it can overfit your training data, and it's learning to fit not just the trend, but the noise. So when you actually try it on fresh images it hasn't seen before, it won't do any better or even worse. So this is a sort of judgment call, um, how much you train it. Anyway, uh, all right. So there's, there's one worth trying. And I think the next one is uh, worth mentioning while we're here, ML102. Uh, here, we're going to break a CAPTCHA. So there's a CAPTCHA are these images that are supposed to be only readable by humans, but machine learning can read them. So here they are. There are letters that have been tilted and changed to different fonts. And so you can input them all and process them create a model and train to detect them. And so it will have an accuracy here. It uh, gets up to like 93% correct um, on the training data and 86% on the test data. So it gets pretty good. And there's a summary of the model. So that's one other image processing. And the third one here in image processing amazed me when I found out you could do this for free in a free Google Python environment, deblurring images. Somebody put up some images with different cameras of an in-focus image and an out-of-focus image taken with an analog camera. You download their data of blurry images. And so here's the sharp image and here's the blurry image. And we're going to train this model to deblur things. I see this in all the cop shows. They have a picture from a surveillance camera. They can't see the license plate. And they say, can you deblur that? And there are deblurring algorithms, although, of course, it's kind of guessing. But we're going to make a deblurring algorithm. Now, this is what you do when you have a data set. You should split it into training and test portions. Typically, you take 80% of the data and train on that, and you hold 20% back that the model never sees. And when you're done, you see how well it can predict the 20% new images of the same type it's never seen. That's how you make sure you're actually learning the real trend and you're not overfitting and just learning this specific training data. So you do that. And what happens is um, you can run this thing. This model now has 17 million parameters. It's got 128 by 128 times three colors of input data, three hidden layers, and then output layers to output a whole image again. So it's much more complicated. And when I did it, I ran it without a um, GPU and it took like more than an hour to do good training. But first I did it with just um, just a few epochs. Yeah, five epochs of training, which will take five minutes. And after you've only done five epochs of training, the results are terrible. 
it takes this blurry image, and instead of turning it into that, it turns it into this. So five epochs of training are not enough to accomplish the job at all. You have to give it more. You have to, and so what you student pointed this out to me, you can you can turn on an accelerator, although sometimes Google won't let you have them, but they will sometimes let you add a GPU to your model. And GPUs are much faster. And if you do that, it will actually run. It would have take it used to take me 70 minutes using a CPU, but only a few minutes with the GPU. And if you actually train it to a hundred epochs of training, then it actually gets pretty good. You give it this blurry image it's never seen before, and it deblurs it to this with the right. I think this is the right answer, and it deblurs it to that. So you see, it actually did make it somewhat less blurry, although not perfect. So it is pretty successful. And this is how the image generators work. Uh, one called Stable Diffusion works this way. It can generate a random Picasso. And the way they did it was take real Picassos, blur them in 1,000 steps, train the model to deblur it. And then to make a new one, they start with random noise and deblur it. And it will turn into a random Picasso. That's a crazy process, but that's how it worked. And I remember when I heard that, I thought that would never work. And if it worked, it would cost so much processing, you could never pay for it. And that's what happened. They went broke. But the, the technology exists. And I think they sold the company to somebody that might figure out how to uh, make it profitable. So there's a few machine learning ones. And uh, we'll, I think I'll stop this video. That's a few more to try if you want to do those. Yes.